Hi, everybody. This is Patty Negri. Welcome to the Witching Hour, that hour of the day, usually late at night, but now it's whenever you happen to be turning into this podcast. This Witching Hour, I bring you the most amazing guests from all over the world, experts in magic and spirituality and just living a good life. And today, I have got somebody really special, um, somebody that I've loved and admired and known for a very, very long time. I'm proud to call her friend i'm proud to call her a neighbor and since this isn't you will all know her immediately but since this isn't all visual i guess i will tell you about our guest the beautiful miss juliet landau Julia, as an actress, a director, a producer, a writer, as an actress, you would certainly know her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the spinoff Angel, um, the movie Ed Wood, you know her from this past season of Bosch, but one of the things we are going to talk about, she has just helmed a visionary feature film directorial debut called A Place Among the Dead, and I've seen it three times, I believe, and I'm really ready for my fourth. It is like no film you have ever even experienced. And there's a message in the madness. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you. Hi, Juliet. Hi, Patty. What a lovely introduction. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, so uh, so somebody can go a place among the dead. Is that a vampire movie? Is that a documentary? Is it a horror film? What is it? <laughs> well, uh, it is a genre-bending art film which explores the repercussions of growing up under the sway of narcissism and psychological abuse. Uh, it's entirely scripted, but we use a meld of fact, fiction, and the fantastical, and yes, the vampire genre. <laughs> So it, it, it starts out, it's it's like, oh, it's a well, documentary, it's Juliet doing Juliet, and then you start going, oh, something's here, and then you start getting into this depth, and then you start getting into this story, um, and then it gets very personal, very, very personal. I'm sure there's a lot of, like, breathless moments throughout, people going, oh, my gosh, that's so-and-so. So so it's obviously a passion project, obviously from your, your heart. How did this happen? Why did this happen? Well, uh, you know, my husband and I, uh, my husband, Deverell Weeks, uh, we co-wrote and co-produced the movie, and you know Dev well, Patty. Yes. Uh, and we both come from this kind of background, and we really wanted to make a movie that we hadn't seen before that tackles something that isn't covered in films, but really that society has been reticent to talk about on the whole. Um, uh, you know, of course, we decided to, to get at it through art and entertainment, but that's really the thrust behind making the film. That's beautiful. And again, looking at narcissism, it's a word that it, it isn't dealt with and it is rampant. I don't know you hear about it more than you did. You don't know if it's always been through history. There's been this narcissistic people. But right now, I work with people every day. That's what I do. I work with people. And the number of narcissistic people out there and people stuck in this spin. And it, it I talk about life draining, hopeless, helpless spin. I've, there's no other thing I know that is so like confusing for people, stuck for people. And um, so again, you're putting such a beautiful look at what that is and what that feels like. Again, in this horror vampire docu-series on rebending thing. So, um, and, and I know the other thing that you do with it, I do want to keep talking about the movie, is that you do these amazing, Q and A's afterwards with people, right? So tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, it's been so powerful. We we really made the movie. I mean, we wanted to make an entertaining movie and to give voice to what has affected many and to open up a dialogue, much like we're having now and that we've been having it every single time that we've shown the film. And uh, the response has been so profound and powerful that our distributor, Modern Films, uh, along with us, we decided to extend this window of distribution. Uh, where we're doing online interactive worldwide screening events and a festival run uh, playing live. And
and every single time the entire audience stays uh, and 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 engages in a talkback for four to six hours. Um, our last uh, two have actually been a record-breaking six hours. But um, you know, the, the movie's constructed in a way. I mean, we chose to make it searingly personal. Uh, as they say, the more personal, the more universal, and it's really a device. Um, we we use you know some factual elements from from actually both of my life and my husband's life. Um, and as you said, Patty, I'm playing an alter ego version of myself, as is Gary Oldman, Ron Perlman, Robert Patrick, Lance Henriksen, Anne Rice. Um, but I think that the 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 in the way that we've crafted the film, uh, people say they go on the journey with Jules, and then there's a certain moment where they turn the mirror back on themselves and look at their own lives. And that's what's been just so it, unbelievable and and incredible and humbling in terms of you know the response that it's been provoking and i yeah. i was just going to say because you said you know uh, it is a word narcissism that's that's luckily uh in the in the time that we've actually started you know from from scripting the movie to now it's becoming where people are much more conscious of what that truly means and um uh and what what that all entails, but it's, and, and now there's been all these publications that are running articles on it. And uh, we've had all these experts uh, that have come, like the premier experts in the world have come and um, been championing the film and been on our Q and A's. We have uh, Dr. Romani, who's a psychologist and the premier expert on narcissistic personality disorder and narcissistic abuse. We have uh, Wendy uh, Blanco, who's from Peace Over Violence, who, uh, which is uh, an unbelievable charity and and she uh, deals with uh, trauma therapy we have uh, Paula V Dalwin who writes domestic po uh, violence policy for the Los Angeles District Attorney's office I mean the list goes on and on we have Sylvia Lancaster who was knighted um, and, and uh, received her OBE for uh, reducing hate crime and teaching empathy I mean it's just been such an amazing ride but the thing with with narcissism a lot of people hear it and they they think of the word means you know, someone who's self-involved, which which it does. But um, I, do you want me to give like a little yes. bit of like the sort yes, of? Yes, please. Okay, great. So from you know the lay person, since I'm not I'm not a therapist, but basically, narcissists are people who have no empathy. They do not care about other people. In fact, they often don't see other people as separate, unique, independent individuals. They just see them as extensions of themselves, uh, something to fulfill their own needs. Uh, they want to be adored and on top, but it isn't just that they want to be successful, because that's a healthy desire that, that we all have. It's that they cannot tolerate the success of others. They cannot tolerate when other people thrive, so they suppress and they scapegoat and they gaslight. Um, they also are very concerned about outward appearances. So often that, uh, you know, facilitate or, or shows in a way where they are concerned with very material trappings, but also they want to appear good. They don't care about actually being good or doing good deeds, but they need to be perceived that way. And they also live in a constant fear of being exposed. And so they, they lie a lot and they live in this fear of, of other people uh, seeing who they really are and also of being exposed to themselves. That, and, and again, this word is coming up and so many people are going, oh my gosh, I live with that person or I'm married to that person or yeah. my parents are that person. Yes. Um, so again, you're bringing so much light to that through this way, getting to people that wouldn't get there, which I mean, I've gotten this message. So what advice do you have for people? Again, everybody go see this movie and we'll talk about all of that afterwards, a place among the dead. So what is some of the things you guys talk about on these Q and A's, what people can do if they make this realization, oh my gosh, I am trapped and you get trapped into, they are trapped yes. in a relationship like this. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's interesting because uh, so, uh, 
there, there comes a point every uh, time that we're talking to an audience that people say whether it's a spouse, a partner, an ex-partner, a boss, a friend, a family member, or our world leaders, um, that these traits are, are so much the same that it's like we're talking about the exact same person. Um, and, and so many people have said that seeing the movie, they, it either reflected something that they already knew or they've had this aha, life-changing moment and, and they've um, done a lot of, of, of different things and have been making their lives actively better. Um, you know, it, it, there's there's all kinds of things. I mean, for, for Dev and I, for, for, for us, you know, not having no contact with our families was mm -hmm. The best decision that we ever made and our lives bloomed um, when we decided that now not everybody uh, can or wants to do that P some people have uh, you know children with a person of this nature or it's a family member that they don't want to disengage from or can't disengage from and whatever is healthy is valid but we should be able to to talk about this as a viable and healthy option instead of being told how dare you which society does a, a lot um, so that's one thing and then it's also if if you choose to keep that person in your life the kind of they are people that that continually cross boundaries but it's finding out you know how to set boundaries for yourself that you respect since they won't and and keeping your armor on when you're around them we like to sort of think of it almost like a lobster shell so you don't <laughs> let anything in you know um so there's all kinds of all kinds of uh tools uh but you, you know you you mentioned the word draining and and you know, we just thought that the narcissist was the perfect meta, you know, the vampire was the perfect metaphor for the ultimate narcissist. And that was one of one of the reasons the way that it really drains your life force. Yeah. And again, it ties all these little puzzles of the, the, the actors who are in it. And um, so that's fabulous. And it is I, again, I don't know that much about narcissism and this stuff. They seem really good at it. There's okay. very few not good narcissists, like they're bad at it, they don't really control you. Is it like, there's it like they have an intelligence, but no empathy or this psychological, that's what just amazes me. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Patty. I think it's that they really have a keen sense and they know they test, they test people and they're sort of like, oh, this is a person I'll be able to uh, to to do this with. I mean, obviously, if you're born into it, like we're talking about with both, you know, both of our parents on both sides. Uh, they already have that domain over over you know a child but but in other relationships like love relationships and friendships and uh, work relationships and all of that it's it's literally um they groom people um it's a, it's an abusive relationship and it's really like where you know uh, you somebody's own uh boundaries and sense of autonomy and independence get sort of whittled and whittled away those boundaries get crossed and crossed and crossed wow yeah um and, and how much it affects everything and everybody around it. I remember one quote you said in the, I don't know if it was one of the live ones or the video Q and A's, um, because again, this is exceedingly personal. Your parents are in it. You're, you're very famous parents, you know, uh, Martin Landau and Barbara Bain. And, and, and it's like, oh wow, what are you doing? And I remember you, and, and like, they're such a big part of the movie. And we're thinking, oh my gosh, your parents are such a big part of the movie. And you had a statement, what was your statement about what big part of a movie they were? Yeah, it's interesting. They are 44 seconds of a 77 minute movie. Uh, their images and their voiceover are, are peppered and it's 44 seconds, but it, it makes such a, a big impact. And, you know, we just feel like that's the perfect analogy. You, know, you spend 15 to 16 years being reared in an environment and then you spend the next, if you're lucky to live long, 50 or 60, operating out of that and uh, adhering to those agreements that as as we call them I'm doing quotes for the people that, that are listening verbally <laughs> agreements with quotes um, that we make with our parents you know and and we let those thoughts uh, inform all of our choices going forward unless we take stock and and see that it's it's destructive which my alter ego in the movie Jules isn't doing she's making destructive choice after destructive yes. choice but that's the whole point it's a it's a cautionary tale of sorts uh, saying you know there is a different way we can break those agreements as adults we can um, you know decide to uh, live differently and and not sort of live by those edicts that we've agreed to 
when we were powerless to, to agree yeah. with anything else. Yeah, that hit me so hard because you we really just think it, it's such the plot line this 44 seconds and it just it really hit me hard going how much we are affected or and allow things to affect us yeah you know yeah you know what and that's why you are empowering people to know what's what's what with that well, it's so interesting in, in talking with people, too, and, and they say, you know, uh, if, if it's not in the family, if it's at school with teachers or with peers and these poisonous seeds that get planted in this very, you know, potentially brief in the scope of a lifetime period that are, are end up, you know, festering and taking root. And, and the same thing in, in, in love relationships, that those poisonous things that really um, get embedded in people and and and. People people start uh, believing them and, and behaving out of them and not seeing that there's another way. That's amazing. So what are some of the things that people are, if people are kind of right now going, oh, wait, I think I might be dealing with that. Is there telltale signs for people? Again, I know we're not therapists and all that kind of stuff, but what are some of the like red flags that people should I kind of noticed like, hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we, we did in the movie, we, we, we based the movie largely on a book uh, by psychiatrist M. Scott Peck called People of the Lie. And he has uh, it, it, some of it's religious, which doesn't pers personally speak to Dev and I, but there, the way the case studies that he outlines in there are brilliant. And his definition of, of malignant narcissism, and he calls uh, you know his definition of evil and whatever words you want to call psychological abuse and all of that stuff. But he is, uh, it, it, it's really uh, amazing. He talks about when you're around someone like that, you feel a sense of confusion and revulsion. And one of the things that we did in the movie, you know, we, we really, you're inside Jules's POV for a lot of the film, and we employed certain filmmaking uh, uh, tactics to really, we want the viewer to have an emotional and visceral uh, experience rather than sitting back as a spectator. And yes. So it's it really you start to feel what it's like when you're engaged in this kind of relationship, how confusing it is, how um, uh, we, we literally when she's near a particular character start to implore uh, blur em, employ uh, blurs and statics. And it's literally the feeling of losing yourself bit by bit by bit. Um, so if, if you're feeling really confused about about things, if you're feeling almost like up is down, down is up, if you're with someone where uh, your needs are con completely have to be subjugated. Those are big t red flags to, to be paying attention to and to be saying, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not allowed to be an independent, fulsome person in this relationship. I'm basically taking care of them all the time. And I do want to congratulate you because, again, besides that, I think is a brilliant film is, is one thing, but you are getting awards all over the place right now. We have been. We've actually, I'm going to look it up because I can't actually keep track of the That's number okay. of awards, which is amazing. So we have just won our 20th top award, sweeping the 11 festivals that we've played. We have six best feature of the festival five best actress for me, uh, four best director, one best script, one best editing, two audience choice, and then we have one unknown as of yet that we've been told is a really <laughs> <laughs> And it's been amazing because uh, we premiered live at the Lady Filmmakers Festival uh, in Beverly Hills at, at the Fine Arts Theater, and there were over 300 films in competition. We played the Shock Fest Film Festival and won Best Feature of the Festival, Best Actress. There were over 600 films in competition out of 10,000 submissions. And other nominees and honorees included Rob Zombie, Clive Barker, Danny Trejo. We played at Zed Fest, uh, which I, you came to uh, when we were selected as the opening night film. Uh, we played at Coven Film Festival, and we were selected as the Spotlight film. And they're a really awesome, cutting-edge, female-centric film festival, which highlights women and diversity and non-binary storytellers. And, you know, the list goes on and on. So it's just been, it's been really phenomenal. That's well, huge congratulations. And again, I cannot tell people enough, whether you think you're in a narcissistic relationship or not, it is entertaining. It is like nothing you've ever seen. It makes you think, it makes you feel, it makes you 
you're just glued to your seat. So how did you come up even, the, like the style of it, the documentary? Yeah, you're right. There is Gary Oldman. There is Anne Rice. There are these people, Ron Perlman. And, and they're sitting there talking typical interview style. And you wouldn't ever think that this was a scripted thing. But again, there are these characters. How did you even do this come up with this get them to do this well thank you that you know they every single person we went out to really believed in the mission and vision of the film and came aboard and it it, it was just an incredible serendipitous experience in that way we actually worked with every single one of our talent and everyone that you mentioned they all have uh ties to vampire material gary old yes. dracula ron perlman is blade two and rice of course the vampire chronicles um uh you know on and on it goes uh, and we really script sat with them and, and scripted uh, their views on the nature of evil, on um, uh, what they were talking about in the film, and uh, and to capture their views and their voice. Um, and and it was it was really amazing, uh, and it was very cute because when when I was working with Gary, every in between every take, uh, we actually have this this part where he. Uh, asked to turn the camera off, and you know this whole whole bit in the scene, and and he kept saying like, do. You, do you think it's natural? Does it does it seem like me? Is it is it real? Is it you know? There, there was a certain yeah. point where I said, "Yeah, Gary, I really think you've got this acting thing down." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the acting is brilliant in all of it because it's act. It's not. It doesn't look like acting. And there you go. There's. It's. It, it's brilliant. Thank and you. I'm so happy, Patty, because we we really you know scripted it with the hopes that the 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 doc the, you know the interview sections looked spontaneous and totally off the cuff. So I'm so happy that that it you know that you're saying that that it felt that way. And in a way, they're they're sort of like if you will the Greek chorus in the movie, and they delineate the chapters and and they go through different stages in terms of you know warning Jules and, and, and telling her about the nature of evil and how it destroys everything in its path. And then there's a certain point in the movie where where they change and it's it's treated with the stuff that's in Jules's head in terms of the audio work that we do and the color palette and stuff. And, you know, we're really just looking at that idea that you can be given all kinds of great advice, but often well, always we hear things through our own lens and we take things in and sometimes we have what's known as confirmation bias and we, you know, hear what we want to hear. And so in the movie, Jules hears like, go toward evil and, you know, love will combat it. And and we personally don't believe that that's actually a, a healthy thing to do. So it's interesting, you know, how, how it changes through the course of the film. Yeah, it again, fascinating. And the beautiful late great Anne Rice of who we all love. Is that what the only movie she ever did? Yes, it was the only movie. And we actually got to work with Anne on another project as well. And she was we're so sad in terms of her passing away because she was not only, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, an unbelievably brilliant writer and gift to the world in that way, but she was a, a gift as a as a human and as a friend and as a collaborator as well. So we, we are sad and miss Anne very much. Yes, very much. But that is beautiful. So um, I, where can people, because people are probably now are chomping at the bit where to see this. So how can people find out about the film, go to find out more about you? Uh, is there a place they can see it if they want yeah. to see it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if they go to my website, julietlandau.com, so it's my name, J-U-L-I-E-T-L-A-N-D-A-U.com, um, it should have all the information in terms of our next screening events. Our next uh, online interactive screening event is with Shockfest, um, and we're doing it on Saturday, March 26th, and so there's a link for tickets to that. Our next live festival is the Hot Springs International Women's Film F uh, Festival, which is in uh, uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, and is an amazing uh, uh, festival director. He's really brilliant, named Bill, and super excited to go there. And then on our next live festival after that is the Poppy Jasper Film Festival, which is in Northern California. Um, so yeah, it'll have all the information about where people can come and, and be a part of the discussion, uh, either live or virt virtually. I love these hybrids of live and virtual. If we got so used to virtual with the pandemic and everything, and now that we're going back to live, I love how they're crossing because not everybody can get anywhere. So uh, that's good. Um, so what's next for you? Do you have another project you want to keep this, the whole momentum snowball going? 
of which yeah. yes but yeah, yeah we act, uh, absolutely so so obviously we're in the midst of everything uh with a place among the dead and then we also have uh, a documentary series project uh that we have shot 80 percent of um on all of the talented people that are in a place among the dead came back to work with us again plus willem defoe and tim burton and many other people so that's been incredible we've just partnered with this uh wonderful production company that's come on board with us named um, uh, Maja Entertainment and the um, founder was the former COO of Marvel and they just had um, uh, the Emily Blunt movie Wild Mountain Time, John Patrick Shanley's film, uh, out and they inked a deal with Universal for the new Green Hornet movie. So we're very excited to be working with them on it. And then we have a companion book uh, with, with that. So we're in the midst at, at the moment, literally writing some of the sa uh, sample chapters that our uh, agent is gonna take out to, to editors. Uh, and then we've optioned uh, 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 something that I'm not allowed yet to say, but it's an incredible, totally different genre, totally different uh, uh, style. It's a historical, drama and it's beautiful uh that we're super excited about as well so lots going on there i'm as an actress i'm uh, recurring on tnt's claws this season and then i'm about to shoot a film uh covid permitting at the end of april that i'm going to be shooting in iowa so there's been a lot a lot going on yeah, it does not sound like you've been sitting around eating bonbons. <laughs> no, actually, so that sounds fun. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I I always say that I'm eating bonbons. No. Um, anyway, thank you for coming on. I've been wanting to get you on since the second, well, for and everyone, just who you are and how I feel about you and how magical you are, because it's about what we do for the world. And again, this is needed right now more than ever, whether there's more narcissists out there or whether it's just it's come to the light the way you are bringing to the light is like no one else and it's needed and it's important so everybody check it out Juliet Landau and a place among the dead thank you oh my gosh thank you so much Patty I am I've been wanting to do this forever with you mm -hmm. um, you are a, a ray of light and it's just you're always so luminous and inspiring and it's just wonderful to be here and, and thank you so much for your support it means the world Thank you, thank you, thank you. So everybody check out Claws, check out A Place Among the Dead and all these other fabulous shows as we all go and eat bonbons now. No. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Juliet, for visiting us at The Witching Hour.